Welcome to the land of Sedona. Sedona is coming to be known throughout the United States and more and more throughout the world as some of the most magnificent land on earth. Bright red rock temples are studded with emerald, junipers, and cedars. They were cut by wind and water over millions of years. Just as it is true of the Grand Canyon, it is also true of the Sedona area that its magnificent features are owed to the fact that water runs downhill. Sedona lies on a slope. As water ran down the slope, it cut into the layers of rock in the land, carrying away cubic miles of sediment. This slope gradually extends northward from southern Arizona. You notice it as you drive up from Phoenix on Route 17. The elevation of Phoenix is a bit over a thousand feet above sea level, whereas the elevation of Sedona is between four and five thousand feet. This uplift stopped about five million years ago. The creation of Sedona rocks began about 320 million years ago when the area of Sedona lay underwater in a sea. The rock from this time comes from the shells of sea creatures that settled onto the bottom of the sea. In the Sedona area, this rock has been covered over, but it can be seen in many of the gray-colored hills in the vicinity of Jerome and Clarksdale. About 280 million years ago, rivers deposited sediment in a basin, now Sedona. About 275 million years ago, sand carried by rivers was deposited in a delta at the edge of a sea. Sometimes the sea covered the land, and at other times the area of Sedona was on the edge of the sea. Either way, sediment settled onto the land. Rocks from this time constitute the most colorful rocks in Sedona. Later, wind from the north drove dry sand into the Sedona area, which at that time was like the Sahara Desert. Some of the sand was driven into the sea that sometimes covered the Sedona area. Here it was covered by the shells of sea creatures, which eventually turned into limestone. Eventually, about 1,900 feet of rock covered the entire Sedona area. The rock was in layers, with the oldest rock on the bottom. It is the weight of overlying layers, as well as cement in water that suffuses the layers, that changes sand and sediment into rock. Over millions of years, volcanoes have extruded lava, which has flowed into the area. It's hard to imagine so much thickness of sediment. How could it be possible for so much sediment to accumulate? Let's think of a few modern day parallels. Think of the sediment that has accumulated off the coast of North America. There is a slope of sediment that was carried from the interior of the continent that over millions of years has created the beaches and has moved into the ocean. At its outer reaches, where it meets the ocean floor, the slope can be thousands of feet thick. Another example is the sediment on the floor of Death Valley. When you walk on the floor of Death Valley, the sediment underfoot can be a mile thick. Another example is the Mississippi River, which has added sediment all along its course. Geologists believe that at one time, millions of years ago, the delta of the Mississippi River was at the place we now call Southern Illinois. The land south of that, along the Mississippi River, has all been added by sediment carried by the river and deposited.
The red rocks of Sedona then originated, some of them from sediment in a sea or floodplain, others from blown sand on dry land or in coastal areas. They can be distinguished by their colors, some more bright orange than others, some red, some tan. The bright orange rocks are more than 250 million years old. The white or gray rocks are either limestone that formed at the bottom of a sea, or else they are sandstone that has lost its red color because the color has been flushed out by water. There is much basalt extruded by volcanoes in the area. Although the carving of the land of Sedona is only several million years old, hundreds of millions of years went into the creation of the actual rock that we now know as the rocks of Sedona. <laughs>